Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. First, I want to say a huge thank you. The channel is up to 261 subscribers, and that is awesome. I'm so excited about that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And as a little bit of a thank you and a celebration, I thought I would start doing some resin videos because pretty much everything I've talked about now has been either FDM or has been applicable to both printers because it has been mostly about how to edit files. So we're gonna get into some specifics about resin printing tonight, and what better place to start than how to find the perfect exposure. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so in the description down below, find the resin exposure test. That's going to bring you to this page, and you're going to click on Assets. Then you're going to come down to these files down here. Now, from here, there are two really important things you need to know. Well, three, I guess. First is that this test is not compatible with all printers yet. They are working on it, but for now, you need to know what file format your printer uses and what resolution your printer has. So, for example, I have one of the first-gen EPAX X1s. I know that it uses the CB DDLP format and I know that the resolution is 1440 by 2560. So as you can see, that would be the first one here. You would download this, put it under your desktop, then drag it over to your flash drive, take it up and hit print. Now when it's done, you wanna make sure that you shut your printer off and turn it back on before you start a new print. Really important that you power cycle. Then the next part of the test is gonna be this uh, validation matrix. Make sure you click on the one that doesn't say depreciated. So it's two parts and both are useful, however, the second part can be printed on any printer with any resin. It is not dependent on any kind of file type. So the second part is just a model that we're going to be slicing ourselves. So even if your printer is not supported, definitely still grab that validation matrix because it will help you. And then to try to help you along that, if your printer is not supported, you can also find two separate spreadsheets down below with a bunch of different resin values on them. They're going to get you close and then you can use the validation metrics matrix to get you the rest of the way. All right, one more quick note before we move on. Neither the exposure finder nor the validation matrix need to be cured after they're printed. So don't worry about that. Just wash them off so you can get a good idea of what you're looking at and then move on from there. They don't require curing. So this is an example of what the first half of the test will look like. This is the exposure finder. You can see that there are multiple columns here. They go from 2.5 all the way up to 20 seconds. Let's take a closer look at those columns just to make sure you guys can see what I'm talking about. You can see the 5 seconds is a bit underexposed. You can see that 7.5 is a bit overexposed. So we know that our value has to lie somewhere in between those, and that's where the validation matrix comes in. All right, so import the validation matrix into your preferred slicer, and then we're going to go to settings. You want your layer height to be 0 0.05. Then you want your bottom layers to be 4, anything more, and you'll ruin your test. Anything less, it probably won't stick. So definitely use 4. And then in exposures, the third one, and with this, you want to figure out the range given the uh, the test that you started with. So with ours, we started and saw that 5 was too little and 7.5 was too much. So my range is going to be from 5.5 in increments of 0.5 all the way up to 6.5, because I'm thinking 7 is probably going to be too much, but you could still go to 7 too if you wanted. So we're going to do 5.5, 6, 6.5, and then 7. And you want to make sure that you're labeling all of these correctly as you're uh, slicing them and saving them. Because if you label one that's set for six seconds, if you label that as 5.5, you're going to skew your test and really confuse yourself. I may or may not be speaking from experience. All right, so let's take a look at my results. First of all, I ended up going with five seconds because I wanted to show you guys what underexposure looks like. And it looks like this. We have less pins than we do voids. We have a very, very small gap between these two points here and we have bars that will actually fit down on these openings and have a little bit of extra room. Overexposure is obviously the opposite. We have more bars than we do openings, more, more bars than we do, or uh, more pins than we do voids. We have a, just a little bit touching here on the center, and these bars are too big to fit down on these voids. Then in the center, we have the same number of pins and voids. These are just barely touching, and we have pins are these uh, bars here that are almost the exact same size as our voids. So this is about as close as I feel like getting. I could probably tweak it a little bit more and maybe go to like uh, 5.75, but I'm not going to worry about that. The little bit of detail that I'd get from that is not really worth it. So I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing with 6, but just to give you guys, like I said, a good example, you can kind of study this. If you want to 
grab a screenshot of this, you'll have it as a reference. This is a good example of underexposure. This is a good example of overexposure. And this is pretty darn close to perfect in the center here. Remember that just because the first part of this test isn't compatible with your printer yet, doesn't mean that the second part isn't still useful. I want to give a quick thanks to Miss Squeak's Emporium of Oddities for helping support the channel. Right now, they have a ton of masks in a bunch of really cool patterns, but even if you don't need a mask, definitely still check them out because they have all kinds of really cool stuff. All right, lastly, I want to give a huge thank you to Venicia Silva for A, creating this test, and also working really closely with me to make sure that I could give you guys the best information about how to read it and how to use it. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and it helps me out a ton. All right, let's go print something.